Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so this is the first of a number of videos on continued fractions. In future videos, among other things, we will look at the relationship between continued fractions and the Euclidean algorithm. So one of the reasons why we like continued fractions is because they allow us to come up with very, very good rational approximations of irrational numbers. Later in the video, you'll see exactly what I mean. But for now, let's commence. So continued fractions are just fractions made of fractions. Um, so for example, if we take a rational number P over Q, then we can represent it as a continued fraction in this manner. And in fact, if it's a rational number, as you'll see um, a little bit later, uh, there's no need to write a dot, 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 because um, every rational number can be represented as a finite continued uh, fraction. Yeah. OK. And again, we'll say more about that in a second. Um, a note on notation is this, which is that uh, later I'll give you a couple of examples of how to write a given uh, rational number as a continued fraction. And uh, when I show you the strategy, uh, we will assume that all of the B's here are one. And in fact, if all of the B's here are one, then uh, we have a slightly different notation we can use to represent continued fractions. And that is this. For finite continued fractions, we can write them like this. And then for infinite continued fractions, we can write them like this, where the difference is clearly the dot, dot, dot here for the infinite ones. Yeah. OK, 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 cool. All right. And um, so every number, rational or irrational, every real number can be written as a continued fraction. Uh, for example, here are three continued fraction representations of pi. Notice that uh, this guy here on the left and this guy, this guy here on the right are not of the form that we showed earlier. And this middle guy doesn't have all the b's being one. Uh, as I said, in the examples uh, that we will see on how to write a given rational number and in the second video, how to write a given irrational number as a continued fraction, we will assume uh, that all of these numerators are one. So uh, when I give you examples, we will uh, work so that all of the numerators are one. OK, um, all right. Um, so every rational number can be represented as a finite continued fraction. I said that earlier. And every irrational number is uniquely represented as an infinite continued fraction. Now, the uniqueness is not saying that pi um, here has three different representations. The uniqueness is saying that uh, none of these three representations can be another number. All three of them have to be pi. So that's what the uniqueness here speaks of. Yeah. OK, cool, cool, cool. Um, otherwise, um, the approach for writing a given uh, number as a continued uh, fraction when the number is rational is like this. It's very straightforward. So take, for example, uh, 42 over 5. Well, uh, do normal division of 42 over 5 so that you can find uh, the quotient. And then the remainder here, 2, is written over the divisor 5, right? And this should reveal a little bit of why continued fractions are related to the Euclidean algorithm. But yeah, this is how you start. And then now what we're going to do is, well, we want a 1 in the numerator of this here. So we can write 2 over 5 as 1 over 5 over 2. So that's this. Right. OK, cool. So we got the desired one. Now we're going to uh, do five over two here the same way we started with 45, 42 over five, which is, well, we're going to look at the quotient and the remainder when we do five over two. And so then um, write this. Well, when we do five over two, we get two plus one over two. And now uh, the process is terminated here. So this one is a short one. And every rational number, as I've already said, can be represented as a finite continued fraction. Yeah. OK, cool, cool, cool. And um, where else? Well, so as I said at the start of the video, one really good benefit of continued fractions is that they allow us to come up with rational approximations of irrational numbers. So, for instance, if we go back to this continued fraction representation of pi, then we can truncate it and come up with a rational approximation of pi. That's what we mean by convergence. So this is a proper terminology, convergence. So convergence of infinite continued fractions are when we end the infinite continued fraction somewhere and then figure out what that rational approximation of the uh, rational number may be. So like, if we ignore all of this junk here, 
uh, here is a convergent of pi, 3. Okay, that's kind of lame, so let's truncate it elsewhere. So if we truncate this infinite continued fraction representation of pi elsewhere, namely here, then we get 19 over 6 as an approximation of pi, which is better than just saying that it's 3, right? But we can proceed in this manner and do even better, which is like truncate it elsewhere a little bit later, and then we get this, and if you work out what this is, it's going to be... 47 over 15, which is an even better approximation of pi. So um, doing more of this, here are like two really cool approximations of pi that you can get. Uh, ah, I'm going back, sorry. 355 over 113, which, you know, to me until I was making this video, I was not familiar with as an approximation of pi. And then an even better one is this guy, yeah? Okay, cool. But that's a lot of arithmetic to get to this one. Um, but both of them, this one and this one we get to by starting out with a continued fraction uh, representation of pi. Okay, now before I conclude the video then, uh, let's look at one more example of taking a given rational number, uh, namely this guy here, and writing it as a continued fraction, just so you, you have a second example. And so again, the process repeats, starts rather, sorry, the process starts by um, doing uh, 355 over 13 and finding the quotient, which is 3, and then the remainder, 16, over the divisor. And then guess what we're going to do on this 16 over 113? We're going to write it as 1 over 113 over 16. And then you know the name of the game uh, from here. Now we're going to figure out the quotient and remainder when we do 113 divided by 16. And you get it, you get it, you get it. So there. Now I admit that uh, both examples... Uh, that I picked both rational numbers terminated early, but if you want, you can write down your own rational number and then do exactly what I just did and knock yourself out, okay? All right, as I said, the second example will show you how to write any rational number as a continued fraction, uh, but otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this and keep watching. Take care.